you have the ruling party, the APC, you have the main opposition party, the PDP, and then you have 79 political parties in Nigeria, popularly referred to as the political third force. We'll be discussing the political third force in Nigeria on the show today. My name is Isabella Akinche, and Political Politica starts now. The Nigeria of the future is for dreamers like me. I belong to everybody and I belong to nobody. Our local government areas must become special economic zones. I hope to disrupt the politics of failure. There will be no secret cow. Dissolve all the congresses, dissolve the convention and start all over again. Mr. President, my people are under siege. Leadership is not about the position you hold. You can't shut down your shop and be chasing criminals. If you allow criminals, there will be no shop. Find ways to to fix your judiciary. That's what say I. And most importantly, fix the mind of the people. The party must do what is right. Nigeria suffers from a state of economic radiculopathy, social sciatica, and political dystopia. Welcome back to Political Politica with me, your host, Isabella Akinche. It's time to meet our guest. He is a creative industrialist and techpreneur. He's the chief executive officer of Imaginarium Global Creative, a creative technologies firm that specializes in harnessing emergent telecoms and media opportunities. He holds a master's degree from the Pan-Atlantic University, Lagos Business School, and a BSc Human Anatomy from the University of Port Harcourt. He is a fellow of the Institute of Development Association of Nigeria, IDAN. He is a member of the Information Communications Committee of the Nigeria Economic Forum and a Ford Foundation inductee. He is a founding member of Guardians of the Nation International, GOTNI, and a graduate of the Leap Africa Program for Young Leaders. He is the curator of the Creative Nigeria Project, a nonprofit that sits at the intersection of art and advocacy. He is seeking to represent Etiosa in the Federal House of Representatives under Alliance for New Nigeria. He is Ferdinand Adimefe. Ferdinand, welcome to Political Politica. It's a pleasure to be your guest. So we're looking at the political third force in Nigeria. That's our topic of the day. What would you make of this political third force? Uh, well, honestly, I think that um, we need a third force, but I wouldn't say we're going about it the right way. First of all, if you want to go against a party like PDP and APC that have a huge structure and funding, capacity, you need to come together. And that's what we're not seeing. Um, I would have loved a situation where all the alternative parties can come together and make a very strong potent force. We are hoping that will happen because there are still talks and negotiation, but it's not happening fast enough because we have just a few days to the election. But more importantly, one thing we must zero in on is what are the ideologies behind these parties. If the ideologies are not united, it will be difficult to bring them together. Let's face it, some people, this is a racket for them. They exist just to run for an election. And so they do it every year since I was a child. I know some names have been seen around for the longest. I don't think they're taking it serious enough. I don't think they're interested in winning or serving. I think it's just part of the game for them. So I don't think those ones should be part of the third force. Those ones are appendages of PDP and APC. In fact, they do this to um, form a coalition and go and support the government in power. I mean, we see all of those things play out again. There is a need for a third force. And I would really think that every Nigerian should question themselves when they go to the polls. Have your life been better in the last four years? And if those who have held power in 16 years think they want to come back and do what they haven't finished with their joking, we must first of all face the critical question. Nigeria is not where it's supposed to be based on the resources. We have 13 million young people, uh, young children out of education. That should cause you to still sleep, stay awake at night. So it's not about running. So that force is supposed to be our hope. And I hope that before the election, we really realize how important we need each other. You already went into my second question, which has to do with coalition or coming together, because definitely not every party will be fielding um, candidates for each of the different elections. So how do you see that happening? Or do you feel that a lot of these um, political parties that make this third force are only in it because of what they can gain? Well, like I said, the ideology behind the parties are very different. And of course, everyone is legally 
permitted to run if you want to run for office. What I think is even most important is that um, for a third force, um, we're not seeing that coalition happening anytime. And I wish, my advice would people should get beyond, look beyond themselves. Let's understand that this is not just another election. We have an opportunity to get our country back on track and get it to move in the direction we want to be proud of. Every day, three doctors are on their way out of the country. And that's brain drain. And we're just talking about doctors. If you look at, across the spectrum of careers, the numbers are huge. And uh, Canada is benefiting from our talent drain. Uh, Saudi Arabia is benefiting from that. Belgium, UK, US. Nigerians are going everywhere to have a shot at a better life. I mean, we don't understand that this is almost a crisis point. I mean, when you find mass migration at the scale we're having now, it's seconded to places like Bahrain and um, Syria. So we're at war, but we don't understand that. And an economic war, when you have an unemployment rate that has skyrocketed, tripled in the last four years, there's a problem. When you have maternal mortality still on the, on the, on the rise, there is a problem. So I, I think we must be m more focused on the issues. And if you look at your country as an alien country, you must be bothered as what can I do to fix it. It's not about me running. It's about even getting people that we trust and believe in. Because I don't know that APC or PDP have good intentions for this country. We must look beyond them. So this third force, this political force um, in Nigeria, which you are a part of by virtue of being in the ANN, do you feel that they're doing more for our democracy or less, being that a lot of them are not even formed on ideologies? You say ideologies, but if I went to each of these parties, will I really see ideologies there? I think on one level they are doing enough for our democracy. First, we are finding a sense where there is a more active participation, more than, the hist more than ever in the history of the, of the country. We have a lot more people running in this election. So that's success on one level. That means we have awoken enough consciousness in people. And so there's, more, there's increased political participation. That's happening. Like I said, but the problem for me is it's not just about spreading team. It's about building the momentum and then creating the significant scale that can allow us to make an impact. That is what is not happening. But on the scale of the, the not too young to run bill, which I am a beneficiary of. We're all running because there was, there's a bill that came in last year that allowed for us to run. I think we, we need to look at creating more opportunities for women, more opportunities for young people to participate. And again, the cost of election is still the problem. The cost of election, the cost of even participating in an election and getting through the process and help candidates emerge. Those are part of the process for us. And uh, so I, I really do think that there is a, there's a measure of success. But um, like I said, it could be more. It's interesting to, to hear you say that um, you're a product of the not too young to run bill, and yet you say nothing good can come out from APC and PDP. So some will say that they have the experience and they do even have achievements that have benefited you. So my question will be, what experience does this political third force have coming into the 2019 general elections? Now, when, I, when you talk about political experience, I think that somehow that is very exaggerated. It's important that political experience is needed, but in the situation where we cannot point to political experience as part of what has helped us as a country, then we must put it, a question mark on it. What we should be asking ourselves is what's the competence and the capacity and the character of this person as a leader. Let's look at their corporate life. Let's look at their career. Let's look at their trajectory. Let's look at the businesses they've been able to build. If they have successes in their businesses and in their career, you can always bet on them because the same criteria for success is universal. It, the, what you use in building a business is basically what you're going to use to run a country. Now, what we have in this country right now are career politicians. They've proven themselves n in no other place than in winning elections and in being in politics. So we don't even know their competence and their capacity. You won't ask me for political experience. It took the president six months to get a cabinet. If, if political experience is such a vital force, you would expect the president to hit the ground running. I mean, there are many things I admire in him, but this particular one, political experience is ever exaggerated in this country. We need leadership experience more than anything else. Okay, so this political third force, some would argue that they are actually being sponsored by the ruling party or the opposition party. And like you earlier alluded to it, as to how they would later come in and choose one party to get behind and support. What, what, what do you make of this? You can't control these things. There are factors in politics. People will exist to do what they need to do. But I still think that there is a counterfeit and there is a real. There are people who exist because they want to be um, supported or sponsored or you know, pandered to the politics in, of the day. But there are people who are genuinely concerned about building this country. And for me, that is where my focus is. My party, the Alliance for New Nigeria, is very important. Our ideology is built around nation building. 
and we're asking ourselves, how do we galvanize our people and drive significant um, programs that can help impact social the, 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 the common man? Anybody can wake up one day and become somebody in this country without knowing anybody. That's something that we believe in as a party. So I'm saying that, for me, I, I, I didn't just go to ANM because I needed a party. I, I took time to study, profile the people in the party, the ideology in the party, and I said, okay, this person is with me on a level. I want to be here. Has it been easy? I think there are many things that um, we're learning as a new party. We're teaching as well. And there is, there is no funding because there is no godfather, as it were, so there are no deep pockets. But we have about 300 people running across Nigeria. And all these 300 people, they are funding themselves. I mean, we're going to raising money, doing the best we can, the little we, we can do. But it's not about a 100 meters dash. It's about being the race for the long haul. Let's keep building. 2019 will come and go. But Nigeria remains, and that is what is important. So if after the election we go back and sleep, we failed, we must stay on and support whoever wins and so contribute our ideas in any way we can to help them succeed in whatever they're doing. Because the success of that person is the success of our country. I don't think at, on any level, early Nigeria, for me, I'm not particular about, it's not that I must be a, 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 a House of Rep member. No, that's not what I'm concerned about. Whoever is there should do what is right. But when whoever is there is not interested in serving you or serving his country, he has no reason being there. And my final question will be your predictions. The third force going in to the general elections, do you see the president coming from the third force? Do you see governors coming, House of Reps, Senate, House of Assembly? How do you think they will fare? 24 hours is a long day in politics. I think the, the, the third force can produce up next president. There is a chance, there is a possibility. But how soon, we, how we come together to accomplish this is where I'm hoping we can see. It will be interesting to see how many governors come from the third force, how many House of Reps members, Senate members, House of Assembly. I definitely think it's very interesting times here in Nigeria. Thank you, Ferdinand. Thanks for having me. We'll be going on a quick breather on Political Politica, but we want to hear from you. You can contribute to the topic of the day, which is the political third force in Nigeria. Tweet at PP with Isabella using the hashtag Political Politica. You can also make your contributions on Facebook and Instagram. The handle to follow is Political Politica. The show returns shortly. Do stay with us. Political Politica. Politics for everyone. Welcome back to Political Politica with me, your host, Isabella Akinche. It's now time for our politics and more segment. So, Ferdinand, this is an opportunity for our guests to speak about their political journey on politics and more. So, when did it all start for you, this whole politics thing or this desire to put yourself up for public office? Interestingly, I've actually been always very political. <laughs> I mean, if my close friends, they know I analyze, I've been on radio, I've been on TV, I've uh, had programs related. So I'm very social conscious as a person. Um, from even primary school, no, secondary school, um, I was involved in politics. University, I doubled into it for a bit, but it wasn't so tidy, so I left. But when I left university, I got involved in uh, advocacy. So in the formative stages of Enough is Enough, I was very involved in that advocacy, trying to lend my voice to shaping social issues. But my recent poll, and then I was involved in ACT Now, another vanguard movement that played a role in the last election. But recently, I'm back in ANN, but this is the first time I'm running, and this is the first time I'm picking a card. Why, why now? Um, a couple of things. One of them is um, a significant realization about where we are as a country. And um, you know, I have two kids. So every day I look at them and I ask myself, what's the future for them? Now there's a story, I don't know if I can go into the story, but it's a pretty long story, but I'll keep it short. So there was this young lady we found in Lekki at some point, and she couldn't recall her name or anything. We took her to a church nearby. The pastor wouldn't take her in because it was late. We took her to the police station, they wouldn't take her in. And they said they needed a family member to vouch that we should take her to Yaba. But we ended up in a hospital. When we got there, there was no, no fuel for the gen, there was nothing. We had to follow the gen and even buy drugs that they could use to sedate her. It took 24 hours, but in those 24 hours, I saw how vulnerable our society was. That somebody who couldn't recall her name could not even find help anywhere else. And it, 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 it opened my eyes to realize if this is happening to a lady, it can happen to anyone. And I think somehow we've not felt the impact of our economic realities of what's happening. My being in this race is just to move the eye of the needle. 
want to be able to contribute in there are a lot of ideas Etiosa for one it's a strong constituency I mean you have a lot of educated people here who are exposed how do you kind of galvanize and harness those ideas and channel them in a way that can impact the country nationwide you have an intellectual base here that can shape labor laws that can shape creative laws I mean this is a creative capital not just of Nigeria but of Africa you know what I tell people Lagos has no business competing with Kano Abuja or Port Harcourt Lagos should compete with the global cities of the world. To compete we'll with let Hong you Kong. speak more about your plans, you know, um, on our Project Lagos segment. Yes. But for now, is our politics are more. And I still want to get more into your political ideologies. I mean, what political ideologies do you subscribe to being a member of ANN? Okay, so for us in ANN, our political ideology is really built on nation building. And as a nation builder, what your policies should focus on is improving the quality of the lives of your people. And for us, it's about creating opportunities for young people, creating opportunities for women. It's, our ideology is about inclusion, inclusion on every level. It's about creating a level environment where Nigerians can really thrive. So when we talk about inclusion, ask yourself about people at the margins of society. How do you pull in more people into the middle class? It's about economic inclusion, financial inclusion, social inclusion. It's about giving every Nigerian an opportunity to dream and aspire to becoming more in their country. And I think for me, it's pretty much the core of my sense as well, and it resonates deeply with me. That's so how has the reception been like to ANN? Like, are Nigerians ready for this political third force, these new parties, or will Nigerians still go back, complain on social media, complain on the streets, but when it comes to the ballot sheet, they still vote for either the ruling party or the main opposition party? I think the reception has been quite um, encouraging. But I think it can be more. And why that is, is let's not forget, Nigerians are coming from um, years and years of cultural conditioning, of political conditioning, where they've somehow been able to reduce to just two options, PDP or APC. So speaking to them without the language of money is always a disconnect. When you tell them about social impact, they want cash in hand. But I've seen a lot more people, even people down the economic ladder, who are saying, I don't want money from any politician. I want change. I want improvement. I want better education for my kids. And those people surprise me. I've been on, in cases where you find a market woman who be coming down to give you something, or even a, a, a motorbike person saying, you know what, I want to be part of this. Now that is for me more encouraging than anything else. But we need more people to wake up to the realization that a country is not built by thinking short term. You have to have a long term view. And any government that is not necessarily committed to the future of your family, the future of your children, is not worth being your government. But the, these people you refer to, this market woman or bike rider that's interested in change and not collecting money, do they make up the mass? Are they significant enough to really make a dent or to even make a change in the 2019 elections? I think for us as a party, what we are more interested in is how to make them influencers in their own right so that they can speak their conviction to others. They have conviction in what they believe, and they might not be in the majority, but they are influential nonetheless. And um, our goal has always been reach to as many people as possible and let them carry that message across the country. Um, so I, I do think that their impacts will only be felt on the day of election, but for me, it's still a measure of success that there are few people who are waking up and realizing that five or four K for every election year is not worth their future. They can't sell it that cheap. It's not the plan. And my final question on this segment will have to do with political structure. So the political parties that have been in existence much longer than your political party, they have structures, they have people on ground, boots on ground, they have deep pockets, like you said. And if everybody is funding their own campaigns, then it means that some people won't have enough money to spend. How does that make them compete on an equal level with the existing candidates who have political structures? Isabella, I think that you believe the lie. Political structure is a myth. Let me tell you how it works. So in so 2015, you're that people who are present. Let me give you. Let me break that down. So you have a political party that's present in 774 local governments, okay. and then you have a political party that's only present in one local government. <laughs> how can you say that the two no, of them no, have no. the First same structure? All, okay, let me explain. Um, APC has it where they won. Buhari won with about 15 million people. So what you're even seeing is further down the line, about 15. 15 million people um, voted him into power. Out of um, 98 million qualified people, 15 million, that's a ridiculously no, no, low number. And I think there is a chance for us if the 60 million people can participate in this election. And guess what? The number of registered voters have doubled. So we just might be seeing um, a revolution that we don't know that is coming.
I'll let you speak more about your plans if you are given the mandate on our Project Lagos segment coming up. But thank you for your contributions on the Politics and More segment. We'll be going on a quick breather on Political Politica, but don't go anywhere because it's Project Lagos coming up after this quick break. Political Politica. Politics for everyone. Welcome back to Political Politica with me, your host, Isabella Akinje. It's time for our Project Lagos segment. And this is an opportunity, in your case, you're running for an office, you're running to represent the people of Etiosa in the Federal House of Representatives, and Etiosa is in Lagos. So we like to look at Lagos as a project. So before we even ask you to say what solutions or what you're bringing to the table, how would you rate Lagos? I mean, we say Lagos is the center of excellence. Does this hold true? I think Lagos, um, till date, is the, um, one of the best um, states to live in in Nigeria. The opportunities are here, but I think based on the capacity of what we have, we are still somewhere around 45% in terms of our performance. So um, a lot is being done, but still not enough is still being done. And I don't know if you get my drift. Um, in terms of the ability to steward effectively the resources in the states to crystallize across the economic ladder, bring more people into middle class. And that is not happening fast enough. But like I said, it's a state um, that is still unfolding and on a journey. So now let's look at the role of the legislative arms, in this case, the Federal House of Representatives. You being in there, or even as a body, what can they do for Lagos as a state? So what Lagos has to offer is Lagos is a progressive state. So Lagos is like an inroad into the other parts of the country. So what you have here is an intellectual capital, a high IQ area. So what we can contribute through uh, Lagos to the center is quality policies that can impact both on businesses and impact across board. Like in terms of education, Lagos is not doing badly. But across Nigeria, 13 million kids are out of school. Now what we need to do is first of all, how do we evolve a proper curriculum that can enrich the learning experiences of our children? How do we create additional funding? Because there's a problem of funding in the country. So education gets about 7.3% annual um, allocation to education on the GDP. And so when you find out in, in a state, in a country like ours with the level of underdevelopment, that is a gross, um, that's really another funding for education. So we need to increase funding. And Lagos can contribute in terms of shipping the policy that can create additional tax incentives for companies to contribute to the NTIF, the Educational Trust Fund, or the, uh, the UBE. We need to look at additional funding. They don't have enough. Um, also, at the univers university level, there is also a sense that the universities have to be properly then equipped to run as functional units, where they can be income generating. So that's, and that's something Lagos can contribute. When it comes to health, health is also part of the challenges we have in Nigeria. One thing I know that we need to do, for one, is to realize that the standardization and the quality of the practices in hospital is actually well improved. Now, Nigeria has been, in, in terms of India, we're contributing hugely to their medical tourism. Why are hospitals not working? What does it take to get the hospitals to work, the federal hospitals, and get them to specialize? In a tourist of one, we don't even have a primary health, a, a functional um, a specialist hospital here, or a general hospital. And that, that is, we are talking about a constituency of about two, three million people not having a general hospital. It's unfair on the people of Etiosa to have to live through this because not everyone can afford the high fees that they charge in, um, in, in private hospitals. So those are some of the things that I'm hoping Lagos will do. So um, for Le the creative economy is also here. So we, we can, Etiosa can contribute in shaping the creative economy and entertainment economy. We can contribute to the global market by exporting our creative products when it comes to fashion, to music, to movies. And we can do this and create even significant opportunities for our creative people. I know you already um, started speaking about it in your last answer, but what are you bringing to the table? Um, I have an experience in corporate Lagos. So I've been in Lagos for, uh, corporate Lagos for about 10 years work experience. And in all those sectors, I've actually been able to understand how business works. So what I intend to do running is we're working on essentially six policies at the moment. So I am one of the rep running with policies already in hand, proposed bills, not just waiting to get in there and do it. It costs across education, health, labor laws. We think there's a need to review that. We're looking at the creative industrialization in Nigeria and in an innovation agenda. We're also looking at um, um, 
the, the, the disabled people, they feel very neglected in our society. We can do a lot more than that. We're also looking at mental health. I think there is still a sense that we, we don't have enough um, therapists around to help people cope with the mental stress. And it's important because mental health is a significant part of what we do. So my experience as a creative um, entrepreneur is also important to bring how we can drive creativity. 40, in a country with 60% um, young people, with a lot of creative talent, you can do a lot with that. That can solve unemployment. So the answer in my question to unemployment is about driving SMEs and driving creative industrialization. So empowerment? Essentially empowerment at every, at every level. And also, we work our education, so you're not just producing people who are looking for opportunities, but you're producing people who can create them. You're not just producing graduates who are seeking employment. You're producing graduates who can create opportunities. And I think that, for me, is very fundamental. You seem to have really thought things through. I mean, you said you already have policies that you're working on. So peradventure, you don't win. How willing are you to work with the government and work as a team to bring in these things to reality? There is no such possibilities. But should I wake up and realize that we've been rigged again? Uh, what I think we might need to do is to work with whoever is there. For me, it's about getting those things done. And whoever is in that place, let's sit down and make this work because if it, if it works in my country, everyone gets the benefit. I mean, as a businessman, I feel the first impact of double taxation, triple taxation. I mean, the, our taxes are ridiculous. You don't want to know how much we are forced to pay every time. And um, what is the impact of that on businesses? We need to create enabled environments. Even when you want to employ staff, you have to go through a series of interviews and you don't find people who are well equipped. And they're graduates, so you need to do a lot more work in that area. I feel that impact, but I think it's not about winning, it's about contributing, like I said. And I'll be more than willing, I think, I can't help myself, I will do that, to work with whoever wins. Okay, so my final question will have to be, Etiosa in the next four years, what will it look like? Sell it to me. Okay, now, the, as a policy person, um, the, what I can sell to Etiosa is the number of bills we can produce in the house. So I would say, for me, working with my people here, we can contribute significantly through the next four years to at least creating 50 bills that can impact across our economy and our country. Thank you, Ferdinand. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. So we'll be going on a quick break on Political Politica, but when the show returns, it's our light-hearted segment. I call it the quick-fire segment. Do stay with us. Political Politica. Politics for everyone. Welcome back to Political Politica with me, your host, Isabella Akinche. Now we switch things up. On a lighter note, it's fun. It's the quick fire segment. Ferdinand, are you ready? <laughs> okay, I think I am. <laughs> okay, number one. The first female governor will emerge in the next elections. True or false? Uh, the first female governor will emerge. No. So that's false? Yes, false. Number two. The party that will dominate in 2019 is? ANN. Number three, young people have what it takes to be leaders because? They have the strength of ideas and the age on their side, the idealism and the passion and to do that. And they're more in touch with the real world. Number four, the funniest thing I've read about myself online? Nothing out of the box, though. Okay. Mm. Number five, safe. the candidate I am most afraid of? The candidate I'm most afraid of does not exist. Number six, Nigerians will vote with their stomach or their brain. We want more brains than stomach, fortunately. Number seven, if not you, who? My friend. Does your friend <laughs> have a name? I, I'd rather not say that for <laughs> now. But I think, yeah, if not me, somebody that I share the same ideology with. But I wouldn't venture a name right now. Okay, thank you, friend. <laughs> thank you. We'll be checking out what's happening on the political landscape. And right after that, we'll be concluding the show on our final words segment. Do stay with us. Politico Politica. Politics for everyone. Five key steps to protect your permanent voter card, PVC. The permanent voter card stores biometric information of a voter which are electronically programmed and can only be assessed with a card reader. To protect your PVC, follow these steps. 1. Do not place your PVC in your wallet and sit on it, as these can damage the inner antenna and render it unusable. Two. Keep your PVC away from direct sunlight, heat, and wet places to prevent it from being defaced. 3. 
keep your PVC in a secure place and bring it out on election day for voting. Remember, no permanent voter card, no voting. So keep your card safe from damage or loss. For more information, visit our website and social media platforms. This message is from the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Political Politica. Politics for everyone. Welcome back to Political Politica with me, your host, Isabella Akinshe. It's now time to round things off on our final words segment. As the name implies, final words, we want you to imagine that you had your final breath and you were delivering your final words to millions of Nigerians and indeed the world. So we'd like you to deliver those final words to your camera. I believe that the best days for Nigeria are here and ahead. Our best days are not behind us, they're in front of us. And I believe this country has all it takes, the people and the resources to be great. We must build our country like others have built theirs. We don't have to run to other countries to leave. We have to make this country worth living. God bless you all. Thank you, Ferdinand, for being our guest on Political Politica. And thanks for having me. And we'll be wrapping up this episode of Political Politica. I'm Isabella Akinshe reminding you that politics is not for the old, is not for the young. It is for everyone. So play a part and stay woke.